Council meeting for April 14th, 2014. Please come to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. is on spring break. <laughs> so, but uh, seeing none, we will close public participation and move on to approval of prior minutes um, for March 13, 2014. Budget deliberations? So moved. Any corrections or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Um, for March 24th, 2014. So moved. Second. There is a correction um, in the paragraph with regard to the Century Enterprise Center grant. It said Commissioner Smith had visited, and that's incorrect. It was Commissioner Esty. He was here with the Congresswoman. Congresswoman Esty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item four is reappointments. I'll move James R. McKen uh, for the Economic Development Commission for alternate position, dates 12-1-2013 to 11-30-2015. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Traffic Authority. I can make a motion there for Traffic Authority Richard P. Uh, Henlicky. Uh, these are all Ramona A. Tito and Robert Edwards Hanna. Dates 1201 2013 to 11 30 2015. Second. Any discussions? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Traffic Authority, Alphanet. Commissioner for the Traffic Authority mm -hmm. Alternate, Christopher J. Cutter, uh, term 12 01 2013 to 11 2015. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Um, don't really have any. It's been pretty quiet. Knock on wood. Uh, comments? So I'll move on to item six, which is a request from the Historical Society. So moved. Second. And so we're closing off the Southern Crossover Road for the annual art festival on Saturday, June <coughs> 10 to 6, and Sunday, June 15, 2014, noon to 5. Any discussion? All in return. It is beautiful. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Tonight we have our Parks and Rec Director here to give you a little update on what's been going on um, with the Parks and Rec. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is one of those five minutes. Five minutes? You know everything. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for um, setting aside some money so we could get our irrigation system up and running. Um, just about finished all the work, underground work. Everything was moved above ground to the back row for vendors. Uh, we have to have Recording come out and inspect it, but we're good to go for the season. So thank you for that. Um, just a quick few of our programs. We had our Easter egg on April, April 5th. So we had probably 300 plus children there. Um, so it was a great first success. Um, Regarding our softball league, tonight's opening night. We have 34 men's teams and nine women's teams this season. Um, all of our 83 boat slips have been sold, which is a great thing. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, we're in the process of completing all our interviews for summer camp council. 
Brentwood, lifeguards. So we're going through that process right now. Uh, park maintainers are busy getting all the parks ready, all the athletic fields um, ready to go. Um, that's about all I have. Unless you have any questions that you have, uh, just to let you know our, um, one other thing is um, our credit card um, and uh, new recreation management system is going very well. Um, so far since July of last year, we have had uh, 913 credit card um, act, you know, um, transactions, um, 550 checks, and 85 people paid in cash. So it's doing very well. When uh, you want to give an update on where we are with Lynn Deming Park? Um, Tom Beecher, our chairperson, um, has sent a letter to um, First Life just to let them inform them of what is going on with that. Once we get there, okay to go ahead, um, <coughs> then we'll start uh, the rest of our process um, going for our permits and finalizing all the plans. So um, we want to have everything wrapped up. I'm glad to see the credit card um, system is so successful. Um, Percentage-wise, just off the top of my head, you're looking at 90% of people are using it now. That's great. That's great. Um, so uh, it's had to have made it more efficient for your office. Definitely. It definitely makes it a lot uh, more uh, accessible to, to individuals uh, at any time of day and night. Um, and, and that's a great thing when you know, parents don't have to run down to the rec department to sign up their, their families. Uh, it's good to see the Deming is moving. Uh, the Sooner Nat Hall project uh, is put together, up and running, and we've got that in place as nice as we want it to be. We all the time. We've allocated would be a very nice thing. Last, um, there's been some conversation uh, with some of the, the town council people about um, access to the green or a variety of uh, organizations and what is and isn't lim uh, allowed on, on the green, such as, just off the top of my head, wine tasting during the, uh, the tasting uh, event. Um, you guys, uh, the indication is, is are so restrictive, not open to expanding what we can do on the green and opportunities. Uh, everything needs to be moderate. Um, but we need to know that this green, which is there for the community, allows uh, some expansion of what we use it for. We have a nice green. Uh, we're not looking to run massive parties and destroy it, but I think we need to be open to suggestions and opportunities for organizations to do a little bit more um, and know that uh, they have access to such a beautiful place and that we're not overly restricted, but there's a concern that some of the people on the commission are, are have such once avenue minds that they're not open to discussion of alternatives. And, um, so I'd like to see that taken into consideration with the Liquor Department Commission. So you want Dan to go back and I would express that to his chair? I would appreciate it. Uh, that I think several of the council people have voiced some concerns in that area. Um, and that it, it be open for discussion and that we consider. Uh, that brings more people to center of town, brings more people in on the weekends. Uh, if we allow oh, just a little bit more flexibility in what it's used for, and some of the things when it's used, uh, be considered. Okay. Instead of shut down just because someone might have an opinion. It's not what they, as one individual or two individuals, I think it's appropriate for the town. Only serve an entire large community. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, just to be, to wrap that up, I'll just say that yeah, you know, we had that ordinance that we passed a couple years ago. To one of the purposes of that to allow people to have a permit, which means the 
place in the mayor's approval so that it could bring more people to town and, and help with fundraising, community events, that kind of thing. And of course, the green is lovely, and you know it's so close to all the new things that we have going on in town. So it's really great. Um, I had a question for you. It just popped in my mind. Of the boat slips, how do you choose or select who gets one of the slips? Is it a lottery? No. Originally, when I first started, um, it was a grandfather policy. And <clears throat> that was probably one of the first things that I really pushed change because it got to be more of a country club atmosphere. But with the way the economy has gone, um, for a while, we just got rid of the boat slips without any problem. And then the last probably four or five years, we had our waiting list, had not, have not had a waiting list. We've been trying to, had to really wait to the last minute. We actually opened it up last year and had one out of town person for the first time ever. Um, so a lot of the voters have come to us and asked us, could we try grandfather policy one more time? And we thought about it for a couple of years. And this year was the first time that we went back to the grandfather policy. Um, so how so what happens is up into um, March 1st, the people who had a boat slip the prior years could come in and register and keep their spot. Um, so let me see if I have any notes here on that. Um, so the same person or is it the same family? Same family can come in and get the slip again. Um, so this year, we probably probably about 60 or so people came back from last year that had a slip. And starting March 1st, we opened it to everyone else. Um, that first day, that first week, we probably got rid of another 13 or so. And actually, last Friday, we just finally got rid of the last one. Oh, really? And what does a slip cost now? $1,200. And it's for, it doesn't matter the size. Well, we, got, we, we are limited and dependent on the slip. Some slips are smaller, some are larger. Oh, okay. So a 16 foot or a 14 foot, whatever. Yeah, we have to place some. So. so in effect, if those 60 people or families want to, they're, they can decide to do it again, you would carry that for you. Yes. Um, until someday if the economy changes and we start getting a waiting list like we used to have, then we can <coughs> go back to a re original registration procedure. Was the non-resident, um, so you said you had a non-resident in Hawaii? They weren't yeah. grandfathered. Do they pay more? Yes, they paid fifteen hundred dollars, um, but they were not grandfathered because they were not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just curious. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Um, of course, I did have a big note here on my desk that I did actually have something I wanted to add to comment, and that was remember we um, joined the uh, prescription mm -hmm. drug uh, program. And so that's been a year. 858 claims have been made. And residents have saved over $41,200 from that little right. prescription and drug that program. Since, since, since April, April 2013 right. to now. Right. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, I um, item A is a request to accept a $300 donation from Connecticut Community Foundation. So moved. Second. Discussion? Do you have the revenue accounts? You could put those in, in the minutes as expressed in item eight. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Of course, we should advertise the program we're going to purchase food for a special three-part program held in May titled Investing in Your Future, Services to Help You Age Gracefully at Home. Okay. So it's something we all need to take. Hans Colcrane. Hans yeah. Nine, Children's Center. Pete? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve uh, the resolution resolved that Mayor Patricia Murphy is empowered to enter to amend contractual instruments in the name and on behalf of New Milford with the Connecticut Office of Early Childhood for a Child Daycare Program. 
if such an agreement is offered, and to have the corporate seal affixed to all documents required as a part of any offered agreement. Second. Any discussion? This is the one we do every year um, for the Children's Center. Right. It's required by the state. I have the paperwork for everyone to sign. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item 10 um, is a generous gift. Uh, if somebody would make the motion, then I'll tell you where they are. Pete? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion uh, for the request to accept a donation of two matted and framed original new field paintings from Webster Bank. One of the Boardman Bridge, 1973, and a second of Lovely Leap Bridge, 1975. So if you look right over there past Tammy, you'll see that painting. And then the other one is down in the office, oh, in my office, and over the copier. You can see it when you go by. Um, Webster Bank had invited us in uh, to see if there was anything uh, we could use. So we were looking at desks and chairs and things, and they did give us some desks. I know the police were over there uh, picking up some furniture. And uh, I said, well, what are you doing with the artwork? And she said, oh, we'd love to donate that to the town. <laughs> so uh, it's very exciting, very exciting. So uh, we didn't want to. They are bolted to the wall. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> uh, maybe we should swap those out for uh, prints, huh? <laughs> Invest, hang those. But uh, yeah, they're beautiful. So we are, we are sending thank you notes, but I did want to make sure that they did get the public acknowledgement of such a beautiful donation. Uh, all in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Uh, item 10B is a little bit different. This comes to you due to some concerns that I have had brought to my offer by quite a few people. I've asked Randy to put this together and to explain to you exactly what it means and what it doesn't mean uh, with regard to panhandling control ordinance. Thank you. Good evening. This came to me uh, through Mayor Murphy because of uh, complaints that she was receiving uh, from, from people uh, really pertaining to aggressive type behavior that was, that's been happening in the street. This almost exclusively, uh, from what I understand, uh, this type of behavior really happens to women, uh, from what I'm understanding. This is anecdotal. I have no empiricism. Changed it in, in a way that that defines the violation to be that of aggressive behavior rather than passive behavior. And we've done that for a variety of reasons. We've looked at all the constitutional cases on the point, and including including in the trial courts, the district courts, and uh, and this ordinance is designed to address specific types of behavior uh, that are considered reasonably to be coercive, intimidating, threatening, and things of that nature. Uh, I believe it passes constitutional muster on an academic sense. I believe that it passes constitutional muster on a, on a real world sense. I cannot speak for the political sense of it. Um, but I will tell you, I've read these cases. Uh, our legal intern has read these cases, and another partner has read these cases. And I believe that this ordinance is going to be, uh, would ultimately be uh, sustained by a reasonable. This answers this. This responds to the question that's presented to me, or as the as the as the matrix of issues presented to me by Mayor Murphy and the concerns based upon uh, the concerns that she has developed 
relating to complaints and comments that she's received in her office. This is not something that would, would uh, just knocked off, if you will, you know, in a summary. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I'm happy to answer. Katie? Okay. Um, yes, thanks, Andrew. Uh, question about, uh, you mentioned the fact that it's harassment, and yes, I agree with you that female um, seems to be getting more of that attention. Define uh, in here, I guess what I'm looking for is I see words, actions, gestures, signs, and other means. Um, anything short of actually touching someone. Touching the assault. Right, but I'm saying, so I realize means. that. So, so as long as, it, if you're just talking, if you're saying something, does that include a wolf whistle? Uh, as you no. No. But, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I wouldn't think so. That, that, that's okay. not an aggressive. Okay, so we're not, we're not going too far. Oh, no, we're not going to control speech. Okay. No, not in an attempt to control speech. Okay. Right. But if someone were to feel uh, threatened, how about if someone feels um, offended? No, it doesn't do it. Threatened. Got to be, if you take a look, and that's a great question, if you take a look at, at to, be, to be determined on the prohibited acts on, mm -hmm. on the back page of this, the actual violative conduct is, is, in, is in number one and number two uh, regarding the, the, the conduct that you're talking about. No person may engage in aggressive panhandling in any public place within the town of the most aggressive panhandling. That's defined in the first place. Right. To constitute a violation, that conduct must be such that it exhibits a specific intent, which is a criminal, it's called mens rea, an intent, mm -hmm. to threaten intimidate or coerce, one of those three things, the recipient to comply with the request or demand for money or other goods or a favor on behalf of the violator. So there must be an intent, a reasonable intent, in other words, that a reasonable person interprets together with a demand or a request. Okay. And, and that, that can be done by conduct, by Right. Your exactly. space, right. <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. So there needs to be some, it can't be just say, hey man, that what? Yeah, I mean, come on. Right. That's not the conduct you're, you're worried about. And um, the other question I had was about the, the, I understand the definition of the 25 foot distance. It says that any bus or train station or stop, does that include a school bus? Yes, it would. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Send it to a public hearing. Uh, I, make, I would like to make a motion to send this to a public hearing. Um, if I get a second, I'd like to um, address it. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, um, can we put that as a motion? Uh, the attorney did ask for some kind of question first. Oh, I asked if anybody had any questions. Yeah, I still have Oh, yeah, we're going to have questions yeah. during the, um, right. so he, the motion's on the floor. You'll continue with your questions. Right. Okay, we just wanted to have the motion for the day. That's fine. And I was so, just looking in the calendar. That's fine. Randy, just first I want to read to the, the minutes, um, just the purpose. Do you have the purpose? So the purpose is that this ordinance is to preserve all persons' right to be free from harassing, disruptive, obstructive, and, and intimidating behavior by individuals engaged in panhandling or begging to maintain and protect the physical safety and well-being of the public and to foster a safe and harassment-free climate in public places within the town of Milford by curtailing such behavior. So my question is, would, would the ordinance be something that, that law enforcement would, would need to protect the safety of someone who feels they're being aggressively panhandled? According to with the conversation I had with Chief Boyne is this would be very helpful in order for his officers to charge with less than a felony or less than something that might not be uh, might not be in, in the cards. Uh, so I, I spoke with the chief today and he said that this is a very helpful tool um, because it doesn't go so far. It's not like the Damry ordinance is much broader. This is narrower. This is this is not inappropriate behavior. This is harassing disruptive, 
obstructive and or intimidating. Mm -hmm. Got to be one of those things. It's not just inappropriate because I don't think it's appropriate. Right. You see, and that's the point of it. It sets a standard that is that is a, a, a level below a felony. And I noticed in number two of your definition, uh, number C, to beg in a manner intended to obstruct or which, regardless of intent, actually obstructs pedestrian and vehicular vehicular traffic. Right. So that's not only a safety issue for the person that's handling. But for the people in the car, pedestrians, it could be. It's walking. actually exactly right. Your analysis is so, right on. It's everybody's safety. Right. If somebody's going to get hurt by hit by a car, or backing up is going to be hit by a car going by, or somebody is going to be stopped at a stop sign and get rear ended, or a light and get rear ended, or it, it, that's what happens, and that's how this, this stuff happens, and that's what that's designed to protect the whole panoply of that. All right. Thank you. I'll defer for now. Thank, Thank you, Mary Jane. So I just have some questions about the penalty. So, sure. Uh, would, it, would this person be issued like a ticket? Yes. A ticket? Yes. Okay. And who's going to determine this um, shall be fined not more than $250? So it could be less than $250? Well, it's a prosecutor, ultimately. Okay, so they're going to have to go to court and, mm -hmm. and be fined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess the only problem I have with the, the penalty piece, and I, I, you know, I mean, there has to be some repercussion, obviously, but I mean, most of these people are begging because they have no money, mm -hmm. for the most part. I mean, there's always some people that are, you know. But, you know, so they don't have any money to start with, so then you're going to take them to court and find them $250, and it's, it almost seems like it's just going to perpetuate the whole situation. They're going to go right back out because they don't have any money and do the same thing all over again. I don't know. I, I'm telling you what the statute offers. It just seems like it seems kind of... Crazy that we're going to. I mean, most of these people are probably homeless, or you know, drug or alcohol addicted or whatever. And I just don't see how you're going to get the two hundred and fifty dollars, or where it's even going to come from. Well, so, I, I, and then, I don't either. Then we That's pile up the the whole everything on the court and the legal system, mm -hmm. and it's more expensive. I don't know if there's some other something other than a penalty that could be. I, I don't know of any other enforcement mechanism under the statute. So, like, how has this worked in, like, uh, and Danbury already has this, uh, something like this similar yeah. past, and what happens, do they get a, do they get fined $250, or is that? Danbury gets fined $150, I think. And, okay. and, but the reality is that what they do is they behave, they modify the behavior. Uh -huh. That's what the police department, that's my information. I didn't get that directly from the mm -hmm. town attorney's office, uh, the city attorney's office. I got that from somewhere else. Uh, that it really modifies behavior is what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. do, they and, have, do they Nobody have cares about somebody playing a guitar in a corner, if you yeah, know what I mean. Right. But, but I, I, uh, yeah, I, I get this whole piece, because nobody likes to be harassed like that right. and threatened. I mean, right. and you do have a right to public safety. There's no question about that. I just, just seem, seems like, um, I, I would like to see, like, do they have any statistics in Danbury as to? I don't know. If, I, I, if, I, 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 isn't like a high rate of recidivism or? I don't have any data. I only have anecdotal mm -hmm. information, as I said earlier, yeah. uh, because I don't have any that? Can we get that information? Try to see if they've had, they have any just, numbers on it. It'd just be interesting to see. And, yeah, like, yeah. and what happens to these people that don't have two hundred fifty dollars? They buy them down. Now West yeah. Hartford yeah. locks them. West yeah. Hartford, I think, locks them up. Yeah. I think yeah. they actually lock them up in West Hartford. Yeah. Put them in stir for yeah. for a while. I mean, if they're obviously really physically threatening, that's a whole different ball game. Well, that's oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's that's the best. That's the assault. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be something that's uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be potentially a felony if you push somebody around. You know. So if Danbury is asking for 150. Why are we asking for 250? Because the maximum allowed. I put that in there just because that's. The I maximum asked them for the maximum mm -hmm. because I'm trying to deter behavior. We we are now experiencing people banging on your car window, mm -hmm. saying I want money, and I've had. <coughs> Dozens of women, and mm -hmm. seven of them in person. Mm -hmm. Where is this happening? Like in, in our downtown, like no, no, like no, right no. on the green, or like all like around the downtown. And uh, once at CVS, um, once at Big Y, mm -hmm. and then the rest are all in the downtown. Mm -hmm. And twice to me. Mm -hmm. And when you get up in my face, and I don't, uh, you know, shrink back that mm -hmm. quick. I'm figuring there are a lot of people that are a little more timid than, than me. And oh, yeah, now it's definitely it's unexpected. Behavior. If it's scary to be in downtown New Belford, mm -hmm. Connecticut, there's an issue. And this is all I have lawfully to address it, is to request an ordinance to put another tool in the tool belt or the toolkit to the police to try and address it. Um, 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure, but, I'm, but for some reason, in the recesses of my mind, there's one town that actually locks, locks people up. And, uh, and, and I'm, 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 wondering, I'm thinking it's, it's that, but I might be wrong. But I'll check. I will okay. check. <clears throat> Just for information. Walter? Uh, most of my thoughts or comments were used up already, but when I when I first read this, you know, I said to myself, uh, you know, what what is prompting prompting this? Why is it necessary? And I said, you know, sometimes the rule of law uh, can box you into a corner, and then it makes the system, I think, inflexible and unbending. But uh, 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 counsel. Uh, Lady uh, uh, Lundgren, my comment was, well, if you're going to find him $250, uh, dollars, he can't pay it. What are you going to do with him? You lock him up then? And who's going to pay for that? Uh, a, bur a burden to the taxpayer. Uh, taxpayer. Yet on the other hand, after listening to uh, uh, the conversation here, I think this will serve the community well. So I'm, I'm in favor of it. A uh, couple thoughts. Uh, first, on, on a penalty phase, the only one that could assess a dollar amount on an individual for a violation would be a court. Really? So that is not, we, we can't set the fine, the courts will set the fine, and they'll do it what they deem is appropriate, whether it be 50 or 100, 250. I also think that if, if someone gets uh, hit with the violation, uh, is found guilty and hit with the fine and they don't pay it, then eventually you'll end up with a warrant and you will get locked up. Yeah, that's a herd that that's a prosecutorial decision. But She'll decide she or he will decide what to do with it. I normally um, in I'm not in favor under normal circumstances of additional ordinances when we have laws on the books that can be used to enforce. I don't, I, I think, I, I'm just a person who believes we don't, additional laws don't normally serve us uh, a lot of purpose other than what I, any of my own terms, make people feel good. But this appears to be, and I'll use some terms that we know, narrowly tailored to, to meet the need uh, of this particular type of behavior. Otherwise, it would end up unconstitutional uh, at some point when it's tested in court. But there's always the courts to test this. So it, it's a, it, 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 in my opinion, it's just a very narrow form of behavior. Offensive behavior does not be, where there's a lot of offensive behavior that is truly free speech. We may all disagree on where that level is, but this is, I think, sufficiently narrow. And then we would leave it to the courts. The fines are really up to the, to the, the courts of judges to determine. That's we don't get that opportunity. So that allows an additional level of protection and the court could find someone to buy if they want. Mm -hmm. Can I respond, Your Honor? Sure. Please. Your point is exactly right. The reason that this is drawn differently than the dam break ordinance is because I believe the dam break ordinance is, is, I don't want to say over, it's broad. It says, it, and the dam break ordinance reads that the purpose is to preserve a person's right uh, to be free from inappropriate behavior. Inappropriate behavior is a personal issue. Um, I mean, and it's, and it's vague. What the mayor wanted is she described specific conduct mm -hmm. is what she wanted to, 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 to control, the threatening, the threatening part. And that's what we've tried to do. Interesting, Joe, you obviously, you know some of these cases because you've just talked about them. The US Supreme Court in a 2000 case, a very, very well-drawn case, and it was, it was written by a, a liberal member, in furtherance of the state's police power, the state may not curtail speech simply because the message is, is offensive. That's the language you just used. But the state is permitted to restrict the speaker's right to free speech to protect listeners from unwanted or undesired communication. Because the court in that case said, while the freedom to communicate is substantial, the right of every person to be left alone is in the same level. So if you're walking out of a store and you can't get out without, you know, you know, come on, come on, come on, you can afford it, come on, come on. That is threatening, harassing, coercive. My point is that you're a captive audience at that point. You have to go out that door. You have a right to be left alone. And that right is not true.
trumped by somebody's right of speech. They're co-equal. And a matter of fact, one of the law school professors used to say, and Frank heard this, your rights, your personal rights, go as far as your nose. They can't go into somebody else's nose. And it's interesting, early on in, in our police chief's career here, we talked about issues, not this particular issue, he said, you know, people's personal rights go as far as their nose. So obviously, let us have the same law school professor. But, uh, <laughs> but that's the point. Offensive is one thing, get out of my you nose, know, fighting words are another thing. This is different. This is intimidating, coercive, threatening. And that's what the mayor described. And that's this. This is very narrowly tailored. Very narrowly tailored. Yes. <clears throat> so I, I, I can accept this. Thank you. Katie? Uh, just what's done now? I, mean, I have personally witnessed someone walking across the green and having this, and I saw it occur. And they just you know, got away as fast as they could and kept going. So in the current state, I would have to either be lucky enough to see a cop right there or go up to the PD and make a complaint, describe the offender best I could or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So how is how is this changing except the except the action that now can be taken against the offender? There are statutes, but the statutes tend to go a little bit, bit farther, obstructing a public way with an intention to obstruct a public way with a okay, and, right. and, or a disorderly conduct has okay. to create a general disorder. This really fills a gap, and it's a small. It's a. It's. It's not as. I mean, it's not as serious as, as, as being charged with, uh, with with a with a with a crime. Right. Okay. Um, it, so it's, it's behavior modification. Yes, and I understand that's the, the goal of it. And, and so the incarc the fine is set by the judge of the court when they get oh. there. And then if they have no money, because I agree with Mary Jane that you're really dealing with people where a fine would almost, they might just laugh at you because I'm not sure if I had $250 or $100 or $50, I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I, not that I think they would all say that, but. Um, so incarceration, I know, is used in, in lots of places. You can't pay the fine for many violations. Um, so there is the opportunity that that could happen. No, it's not, it's not an option. Well, because that's you, a good motivator for behavior change. But what you can't do is, like in Virginia, you can say 30 days or $30 to do that. Yeah. But they still do. Uh, uh, we can't do and, that. And we can't do that. Actually, Virginia, Virginia doesn't do that. In the, in the recent past, they've changed that. But, but uh, there's no either or, because what that does is it exchanges you for a debtor's person. But the reality is that is that the prosecutor will recommend if this if the prosecutor is going to prosecute this, mm -hmm. tell the, tell this person you know the public defender will plead for this guy and whatever and what will happen is if the prosecutor puts some conditions on it and they'll move on or they'll whatever yeah, okay, don't do it again <coughs> something like that I don't know how effective that well, is but, right, but right. it has at least it shows the police presence and uh, and or the judge will set a fine if if they or they'll agree with fine something. For the community service, well, things in, of that nature. In, in general, I, I, <coughs> I certainly have seen myself. Uh, I've been in front of one of them, and I've seen it, so I think definitely we need to address it. I'm in court in that. I guess I would just say that I would hope that there's an increase. I mean, I know we usually have a patrolman, at least one around. Um, I think the key to this is that there's someone to go to, because a lot of people, as I saw someone, I could not believe that she didn't turn around and say, did you see that? Where are the cops? You know, or whatever. But she just kept on going to go shopping. And uh, and that kind of defeats everything, you know? Well, part of, part of the issue, too, is that there is no local ordinance for the police officer to go over there and discuss with the person. That, that's not acceptable here. There's no ordinance. Well, I would just like to see along with this to have to know that in our, you know, our downtown's not that big, and I know there's somebody around most of the time just to, but I think overall I could uh, support this um, in its, the way it's written, because it is narrow enough, but I don't think we'll be getting into somebody's nose. Thank you. Pete? Thank you, Mayor. Randy, as far as a, a penalty, 
or as far as the ticket itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ticket itself is actually going to be the discretion of the officer. Right. right. Correct. The officer, right. The officer, so the officer use other skills that she already right. has. So the other officer has been trained Precisely. to deal with the public at large, can kind of connotate whether it would be an aggressive panhandle or not aggressive. Well, it has to be so aggressive. It has to be no, aggressive no, that. No, it has to follow this. Has correct. To be. Yeah. So you can't say, well, I think that's correct. Right. So the officer would be the one that would make that determination. Right. Whether the conduct right. was well, told, uh, whether it fell within this prescription. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And within the prescription, I mean, prohibitive acts to me, number one, no person may engage in an aggressive panhandling in any public place within the town of New Milford to constitute a violation of subdivision. The violators conduct conduct must be such that it exhibits a specific intention to threaten, intimidate, or coerce the recipient, the recipient to comply with the violator's request or demand for money, goods, or, or favor on behalf of the violator or some third person. That's so, specific. Yeah. Right, so that specific case is you're protecting a citizen of New Milford from an assault almost. Well, you, you would, yeah, you could, you could right. say that, so that's, but that's, it's not a technical assault. Correct. It's, it's essentially a demand and it's an intimidation. Right. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. So Court. we go to so there's a narrow descriptive there. So number two, no person may engage in handling or begging in any public transportation vehicle when 25 feet of any bus, train station, or stop. That's a complaint about the, the bus. Right. Yeah. So I'm Day thinking one. I'm thinking yeah. you have a child that gets right off here on Railroad Street. Right. So. To me, I mean that. To me, there's another safety issue. That's yeah. pretty, oh, pretty, pretty narrow and it's descriptive, right? Right. Okay. So number three, no person may engage in panhandling or begging on school grounds. I mean, much money. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. Uh, number four, no person may engage in panhandling or begging within 25 feet of any automatic teller machine. There's other reasons for that. Well, of course. Right. Yeah. And I think, again, thing coming to my mind is safety. Right. The person withdrawing their money out of, out of the ATM machine. It's stuff that you and I take for granted. Exactly. Pete, uh, but, uh, you know, women may not take that for granted. They see somebody in their account machine. I don't so, think of which one. Right. I'm an idiot. So, number five, Randy, no person may engage in panhandling or begging from the operator or any occupant of a motor vehicle. And that's something that we just talked about before. Not only is it being a safety issue for the person that's panhandling, but the person driving the car the passengers in the car, the other people walking around. I mean, that to me could just be, you know, you're preventing a major accident there. So number six, no person may engage in panhandling or begging as to require patrons, customers, clients, or pa patients of any business to take evasive steps to avoid physical contact with a violator while such patron is entering or exiting any place of business. And to me, I kind of connotate that also as not only being a safety issue for the patron that is establishing the business, but also the safety for the person that's panhandling because let's say they're going out and they're panhandling uh, and it's uh, the bottom of the ninth, the Yankees end up losing or Red Sox are walking out of the bar and not a too happy mood and someone's trying to pester something, well, you're gonna have a, I hadn't you know, thought of that. Gonna have a safety issue there. Potentially. <laughs> I hadn't you know? thought of that. And the thing I congratulate you on, Randy, is it's a very narrow descriptive of things, to me, that affect the safety of everybody in the town. I mean, all sides. And to me, it should be something that, you know, it's just, common, well, it's just yeah. common sense. That's a very good point, because that's exactly the point. It, 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 it's every, protecting it's all parties. It's inclusive of everybody. It's, it's, it's concerning the person, too, the, the, the panhandler, too. I mean, that, that happens. People get hit by cars all the time in New York City. And the, and the thing that I'm hoping is if, the, is if the motion does go through tonight and we do set up a public hearing and it does go through, then I hope that we can, and I'm sure the mayor already has, has it in her plans, is giving this to a copy to social services, to loaves and fishes, so that, the, so that people are educated <coughs> onto what this could intend. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, and I can't speak for anybody, but I'm sure that in the beginning, I'm sure that people will be, you know, like anything else, you know, people warnings or whatever, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm gonna fully support it. Thank you. And the police. Okay. Correct. Do we have currently a public intoxication ordinance? I do not believe we do. Do we have a vacancy ordinance? No. Oh, and we, no. So 
So I would like to suggest May 12th um, for the public hearing. Well, give us time to warn it, you know, so the public knows. Oh, all right. Thank you. You want that information for the town council though before that? Oh, okay. And one other question: um, Can the police officer just give out a warning? Or oh, sure. That's their discretion. That's always yeah. They always have the discretion there, which is half the time how people find out about it. Is the police officer so? Um, that's unacceptable, and you know we have a regulation on that. So the next time we see you doing it. That's right. <laughs> Usually you hear that well, a lot. The next time, the yeah. well, many people are on the library. People. No, I know. But yeah. I think that's how you find. But out. they're probably not looking up ordinances. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You're not reading it at that time. Even people right. it, for traffic infractions, police officers have discretion and can say to someone. Okay, so you know you made a right. mistake or something. Don't yes. let it happen again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, would May twelfth be acceptable to put this on for public mm -hmm. hearing? Do we have a council meeting that night. So, um, all in favor of the motion to send this forward to a public hearing for May twelfth. All right. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. Um, okay, item C is the Neighborhood Assistance Act, which allows people to accept money or organizations think of uh, culinary school. We, this is our, is this the third year? I think it's the third year where we've done this, so it's a culinary school is one of the local agencies that participates in this program. Pete? So I'd like to move uh, that the town of Milford, uh, the town council approves the Milford's participation of the 2014 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program and authorize Mayor Patricia Murphy to set a public hearing for Monday, June 9th, 2014 at 7.15 p.m. to consider program for and um, the reason for it being so far in advance and having a brain cramp, Cammy. The reason I'm asking for it so far in advance is so that with this public legal notice that will go out with the public hearing, the applications are made available to any nonprofit that That's wishes right. to complete it and return it prior to that hearing date. And Mayor, I would personally like to thank Tammy for having this early because we heard from federal council members through budget deliberations that there may be opportunities to access different funds, and I applaud your staff for doing that. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Um, the item D is for the town meeting, the annual town meeting. Set a date. Yes, I did have a date. April 20th or May, May 12th. No, let me think. May 13th. Uh, January, February, March. April 29th or for a town meeting and then a referendum. May 13th. May 13th because the registrars need time to amass um, that 40 people to work the polls. I meant to was shaking head to myself, sorry. Mm -hmm. Absentee voter. Uh, town meeting on Tuesday, April 29th, or, and a referendum on Tuesday, May 13th. Is, th is this for this year because the date is wrong? Did you mean it says April 29th, 2013? Hang on. Oh, oh, no, that's a typo. Where is that? Third sentence, third sentence under. Oh, oh, yeah, she must have copied mm -hmm. last year's notice. Yeah, it should say 14. Sorry. Would you correct that? 2014. So moved. Okay. Do you want us to read it up? Please. Yeah. All right. Uh, hereby uh, move 
that, quote, uh, be it hereby resolved, the New Milford Town Council authorizes and directs Mayor Pat Murphy to warn and convene the annual town meeting to be held Tuesday, April 29th, 2014 at 7 p.m. in the E. Paul Martin Room of the Roger Sherman Town Hall at 10 Main Street, pursuant to Section 502 of the Charter of the Town of New Milford. The purpose of the meeting is to receive public comment and discussion and discuss the proposed town government and board of education portions of the budget as prepared by the board of finance in and for said town for the ensuing fiscal year, July 1, 2014, to and including June 30th, 2015, and to vote on the following motion, open quote, that real estate and non-motor vehicle personal property taxes for property on the October 1st, 2000, is that correct? 13? Mm -hmm. 13, grand 13 grand list be payable in two equal <coughs> installments due on July 1st, 2014 and January 1st, 2015, except that motor vehicle property taxes and any property tax not in excess mm -hmm. of 100 shall be due in a single payment as authorized by Connecticut law, close quote, be it further resolved that the town council authorize, authorizes and directs the town clerk to timely warn the budget referendum and to conduct same on Tuesday, May 13, 2014, in accordance with section 707 of the new motion charter, close quote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Uh, the tax collector action on the refunds? I'd like to make a motion to approve the April refunds of 5997.69. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Do you have the resolution for us to sign? Uh, we did sign it. Motion for adjourning, Madam Mayor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain?